right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. This is how we're going to do it. The secrets to great grilling that start well before you fire up the flames. This is the one-stop shop for all your protein needs. I love it. We're taking you behind the scenes at the source of Kentucky's finest meat. This is Altec Angus, the beef that most of the people are raving about in this Kentucky market. And we're going to one of Kentucky's finest restaurants for the secrets to grilling it. There's a lot to tell. It's great steak from start to finish. These are going to come out beautiful every single time. Get the secrets to doing it yourself just like the chefs at your favorite local restaurants. Right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Next time I cook a steak, it's going to be just like this. Tim Laird here, revealing more secrets of bluegrass chefs. And this time, we're uncovering the secrets to cooking chicken and steaks that taste as good as they do when you eat out. And our search has taken us all the way to the very beginning. Ever wonder why the steaks taste so great when you order them from the restaurants? Well, the secret is because most of them come from right here. This is Critchfield Meats in Lexington. It's a family business focused on old-fashioned butcher shop quality. This is where uh, cutting hair is a uh, top sirloin. Critchfield supplies about 125 local restaurants and they can serve you too at their retail store in Lexington on Nicholasville Road. One local chef who relies on Critchfield is Jeremy Ashby at Azure Restaurant and Patio. They've been our right hand man forever. We're gonna hook up with him to get the secrets to making steaks and chicken turn out great on the plate. Yeah, I definitely have a few secrets to show you about these. But first things first, we'll start at the beginning where great taste begins, behind the scenes at Critchfield Meats. Now, we're gonna go to the production room, so that means by USDA standards, we're gonna have to don on a smock and a cap. If you can grill it, Critchfield has it. We also even have some hogs here. And there's plenty to go around. We go through probably 800,000 pounds of chicken, fresh chicken per what? month. Larry, that's a lot of chicken. I gotta per tell month. you. Wow, <laughs> per month. With that kind of volume, everything is fresh. This is all Cryvac, uh, bone-in, fresh chicken. And you can see it's all, it has about a 14 to 17 day shelf life. We can cut it for you or set it to you by the catch. This room here, Tim, is uh, mainly meat, uh, fresh meat every day, uh, in and out. We even have eggs in here, we do fresh eggs. eggs. Hey, you've got um, the chicken, now you have the eggs over here too, so I like that. You got them both. That's right. And I can tell this is a, a definitely a cold storage. This room stays about at 38 to 42 okay. degrees. And there's another room that's even colder. Now we're actually in a freezer. This is not a bad place to uh, visit in the middle of summer, I'll tell you. This uh, feels pretty good. You probably come back in here once in a while just to cool off. This would be 20 below. Oh, okay. it's a glass freezer. <laughs> that's cool. Of course, we do uh, quite a bit of seafood in this in this particular freezer. Shrimp, frog legs. Frog legs even. Spy. All right. Shrimp. Okay. Um, just about anything you can think about. You guys have it all. If you're planted a pig roast, you can get the whole hog. Everything. That's great. So we're going into the processing room now. Now this, this side is for poultry. Okay. By the way, everything is absolutely pristine because the USDA actually has their branch office right here. All this product came in either yesterday or today. Most of your local um, white tablecloth restaurants want chicken daily and they sure. want it fresh. We scale every piece for Very size. Good. I understand that's what they call the perfect breast, is that right? That's what I call precision work. You do this at home, Tony, when you go home, uh, you do it some, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurants will tell you exactly what they want and you all will cut it to precision, whatever they want, how they want it. And who wouldn't want this? That is perfectly done. It's just one of the creative ways Chef Jeremy Ashby has come up with to serve chicken tenders. Yeah. That is great. Stay with us because next we're taking the chicken from Critchfield to Azure Restaurant and Patio. Thanks for bringing the Critchfield guests. And we're getting the secrets to making an unbelievable party tray on the cheap. Anybody can do this at all. Plus, Chef Jeremy reveals the secrets to grilling the 
perfect steak. This is how we're going to do it. It's all ahead on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Next time I cook a steak, it's going to be just like this. Tim Laird here with Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time we're in Lexington and we're going to go behind the scenes of Critchfield Meats. Critchfield is a mecca of meat. From steak to seafood to chicken and just about everything in between. We service about 125 uh, restaurants every day. And even though it's a huge operation, what I love about Critchfield is it's a family business. Right, my dad started the business when I was eight and uh, I started getting involved uh, in the grocery business when I was 11. Mark Critchfield is passionate about carrying on his family's tradition of quality and service. It's something he always knew he would do. I started cleaning and grinding and started cutting meat at, uh, at an age of about 13. Mark certainly knows his meats, and when it comes to cooking it, there's no one better than Chef Jeremy Ashby at Azure Restaurant and Patio. So we've met up with him to get his secrets to great grilling. Hey, Jeremy, how are you? Hey, what's happening? Chef, uh, I tell you what, I came bearing gifts this time. Looks like you brought in some chicken tenderloin, which... Uh, you know, this is a great little little cut. A lot of people don't utilize this stuff. You know, they go for the whole breast, so this is cheaper. They cook quick. You can do this at home in no time. How's this for quick and easy? Okay. A uh, little bit of chicken. I'm going to add a few tablespoons of hoisin sauce, which you can find in any grocery nowadays. Just a dash of rice wine vinegar. Okay. And sesame oil. So kind of an Asian influence already, I can tell. Absolutely. This. If you're going to find this on a lot of restaurant menus for an appetizer, uh, we do it at home all the time. And uh, this is great to take to a party. Get a good marinade on this. Okay. And then get them skewered up. Just like this on a little bamboo skewer. The secret is marinate the chicken for four hours to make sure it soaks up all that amazing Asian flavor. Now, when it comes down to it, you're going to have to get your hands a little bit dirty and get on the grill. But uh, salt and pepper, always. So we've got uh, a little bit of oil we're going to put on this grill, make it nice and nonstick. You know, it's a nice sheen there. It's going to help that meat pull right up and not, not stick to the grill. And that's a good secret for uh, grilling. You want to have a clean grill, but give it a nice little uh, oil sheen right before yeah. cooking. Look at this. I mean, a little rag with some uh, twine wrapped around it. This thing's good for a couple of years. And you'll see here that it's not going to stick. And after these get done cooking, I'm going to show you how to kind of tray this up and make it look great for your guests. You promised that it's not going to stick, so you're going to do this uh, live? Oh, man. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, uh, look at that. It just turned right All over. Right. Look at that. Nothing stayed Nothing on the grill. stuck on the grill. That is the secrets to grilling. Well, one thing about chicken is how do you know when it's done? Because I don't want to overcook it. I don't want to undercook it. So that's, tell me about that. That's a great question. I'm very sensitive to The proper way to do this is take a meat thermometer. Okay. When, when it registers about 165 degrees exactly, at, you know, you want to hold that for at least a minute and then the internal temperature will be fine to eat. Uh, in this case, we've had the tenderloins on for about 10 minutes. I'm fully confident that they're ready. They're done. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and I'm going to use a little white sesame seed and sprinkle it all over. If you take a look, I've got just a, a simple pineapple which you can pick up. And uh, all I did was kind of cut straight down the middle. you got your chicken skewers and you just want to stick them right inside the pineapple. Have them kind of stand them up in all different directions. This will work for our purposes. So you don't have to be a chef to do this at home. I mean, while your guests have fun. Yeah, save some of the marinade. Sprinkle it on the plate for a dipping sauce. Now it looks like you're not done yet. Oh, well, we could put a little green on there. <laughs> That's just cilantro oil. Another little trick. And then we'll use some uh, locally grown daikon sprouts. Just to dress the plate. That looks amazing. Yeah. It certainly smelled amazing when it was on the grill with all that marinade and all the flavors going on. But there's one last thing to do. <laughs> yes, you know, don't yeah, you? we got to try it. We've got to try it. Boom, just take that out like that. Oh. That is perfectly done. Yeah, that is great. Anybody can do this at home. That's it. This is good. Thank awesome. you for sharing the secrets to this incredible appetizer. And there are more secrets coming your way. Next, it's back to Critchfield for the secret to great steak that starts at the very beginning. This is an Altec Angus uh, New York strip loin. Okay. We're trimming it, shipping it, and grilling it to perfection when Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs returns. 
Tim Laird back with you with more secrets of bluegrass chefs. And this time, we're behind the scenes at Lexington's Critchfield Meats, where we've discovered a big secret to great grilling. The chefs are always telling us the secrets to a lot of their meals and dishes are about quality ingredients. And here at Critchfield is where quality starts. They've been our right-hand man forever. Whether you're a restaurant chef or grilling at home, you can always count on getting top quality ingredients from Critchfield. This is the one-stop shop for all your protein needs. I love it. In addition to supplying 125 local restaurants, Critchfield also sells to us home cooks at their Lexington retail store on Nicholasville Road. If you want it, they've got it. If you're planning a pig roast, you can get the whole hog. Everything. That's great. And you know everything is fresh because it's coming in and going out by the truckload. We go through probably 800,000 pounds of chicken, fresh chicken per well, month. Larry, that's a lot of chicken. I got to tell month. you. Wow. <laughs> per month. All this product came in either yesterday or today. And... All right, Larry, we've seen a lot of chicken, but where's the beef? Right to your left here. Okay. Right through the store. Right through here. Here we go. Each type of meat has its own cutting room, so there's no chance of any cross-contamination. Well, certainly here's the beef, I can tell this. This is where uh, cutting here is a uh, top sirloin. Before slicing the steaks, they send the meat through a machine that tenderizes it with dozens of needles that poke through the meat. From there, handlers cut the steaks into a variety of cuts according to each restaurant's specification. You want a good sharp knife and I have my steel and my knife here to keep a good sharp and nice blade on it. I can tell you that's a big secret is a sharp knife because look at the way it's penetrating all through that. Trying to cut that, uh, all the fat off that top of this butt. Get all that silver skin off of it and the, any bone fragments that are on the, on the back side you want to cut them off. I've also noticed you have all your fingers so we haven't had any uh, accidents Well, I got here. scars on them. But okay. I... <laughs> Every steak will get scaled and it will be cut within a half ounce tolerance. That's wow. what most restaurants are. So when you say, uh, I want a nine ounce, it's going to be It'll be right, right on. on. Right on. So these were a nine ounce steak. So these steaks here will be anywhere from 0. 0.56 to 0. 0.62. That's a lot of experience. I mean, they're all dead on. That's right. great. This is an Altec Angus uh, New York strip loin. Okay. We try to cut uh, most of that tail fat off so the customer gets the best value. I'll try to cut about a 12 ounce portion here. Try to get within um, an eighth, eighth of an inch on the on the fat side. Oh, this steak here, after I trimmed it up, it's uh, 12 ounces, 0.785. What do we got going on? This, this is, is a roll stock vacuum machine. Okay. And this will actually seal the product. It will seal it airtight so you get a maximum shelf life. Right here from being cut, right to vacuum seals, fresh all the way, just like the customer wants it. This is exactly what the restaurant will get. There's your strip loins. There's no air in there, I can tell that. Secrets of uh, Bluegrass Chefs, take this to the grill. I'll tell you what, Mark, now that it's all boxed up, this is actually what I want for my birthday. All ready to go. So, well, we can make it happen if you have the right person who wants to give you that gift. Uh, you can get online and order it, or you can have someone order it for you right online. You go to critchfieldmeats.com. I can't think of a better gift than a box of steaks. Wow. You know, it was great seeing all the behind-the-scenes action here and how this meat comes in, gets cut, packaged, and boxed. But my favorite part is cooking it. So let's get going. That was awesome over at Critchfield, but now I need the secrets of how to cook the meat. So I'm here at Azure Restaurant and Patio to see Chef Jeremy Ashby to show us those secrets. I'm back in the kitchen, and I'm glad I brought my steaks here because Chef Jeremy Ashby really knows what to do with these and share some secrets. There's a lot to tell. Uh, you know, this is, this is Altec Angus from Critchfield. I use this in the restaurant. I mean, you can get this at the retail store also. You know, they might wrap it up in the old wax paper or you can get these cryovac packages as well. We learned this from the plant, Jeremy, that yeah. uh, actually this will stay three weeks in your refrigerator and oh, up sure. to six months in the freezer. So how's that for uh, staying power? You notice, I mean, I'm pulling this meat and it's just almost just falling. So right apart, you see how tender it is. is. The way that's going to cut and eat is going to be incredible. And I've come to, you know, re re rely on that from Critchfield and also Altec Angus. Chef Jeremy has some good secrets when it comes to grilling steak. One is, keep it simple. One of these steaks, I just want to use a little salt. Okay. And oil. A lot of people get into pepper when they get into grilling steaks. I don't do it. And the reason why is pepper contains a lot of oil. And it tends to, on the grill, char. Right. I just want to taste meat. And that's how, you know, when I want to just, you know, savor the steak, that's how I do it. But when I have the guys over, 
I'm gonna go for the spice rub. Use your, your typical black and seasoning, your spice rubs from the grocery. You know, don't use too much, but get a nice coating on your other steak with a little bit of oil. Get that kind of working in there. Rub it in a little bit. Now you can see it's gonna work already. Now if you have a really high marbled steak, like a ribeye, right. or you see a lot of inter intercostal marbling in this meat, back off the oil, because that's gonna start melting. Okay. That's gonna drip into the grill and start flaming up. So we're gonna write to the grill, one just okay. salt, right. no pepper because it gets bitter. Okay. And this one we're going for flavor, we're going for bitter, we're going for everything. Because I got a cool topping for this black and oh, steak. Let's get grilling. Get it well oiled with cooking oil. Get that grill good and oiled. One go right here. A little press, make sure everything's all the surfaces are touching the meat. We want those nice grill marks, what everybody oh, you, you see in the restaurants, the, the stuff everybody wants to achieve at their grill at home, but this is how we're gonna do it. Sure. After about two minutes, we'll give it a quarter turn, and that'll create that diamond shape, that grill mark that everybody's looking for. And that's and that's the classic. If you look at this, and they talk about the clock, right? You go at 10 o'clock, yeah. and then turn it over to two o'clock. You wanna go to 10, and then we're going to two. Yeah, that's right. That's a great way to talk about it. Time flies when you're having fun and grilling. After the two minutes, we, we can kind of peek underneath the steak, and you see that first initial mark coming in. And it's super nice. Then we're gonna give it that quarter turn the other direction. Same with the other steak, make sure it's looking good. Quarter turn. These are gonna come out beautiful every single time. There we go. Look at those little diamonds up there. For this blackened steak, the one we were talking about, yeah. mixing it up a little bit, I got a great little three ingredient, just butter we can put on top of this, blow great. people away. Do you guys have some butter at home? Oh yeah, I think we all have butter at home. You want a little bit of softened butter. Okay. You want good blue cheese crumbles. And then here's the weird part, we got that blackened, that spice going right. on. Right, a lot of big flavors. Right. We're gonna use blueberries. Oh no, that is different. One part, uh, you know, blueberries to three parts butter and two parts cheese. So you got the sweet, the heat, the flavor, and everything all going on. Especially if you're drinking wine too. Oh yeah. Because it picks up on a lot of those fruity undertones. If you can, use a little fork and mash up some of the blueberries and uh, get those kind of uh, pulverized a little bit. A little bit of pepper and salt. I like to roll it up in saran wrap. Okay. And then uh, just kind of roll it with my hands until you've got this long. Oh, so here is all already done. Yeah, you put that in the fridge and it's good to go for several weeks. That is great. And I'm confident anybody's going to like it. There you go. So you can try this at home. These steaks all are right. coming off. I mean, they've got the black ones you can see. Uh, has great little flavor undertones. There's lots of juice coming off both of, both of these of this meat. I'm going to plate one up, uh, the black one, with a little bit of that butter. Okay. But we're going to go right down the middle. I want to show everybody what this is going to look like on the side. we got a nice wow. medium here. We're gonna go right to the plate. A good plop of that blueberry butter right on top. Let that melt on the steak before you serve it. Everybody's gonna be uh, oh, very, very happy. That looks absolutely fabulous, Chef. This is some of my favorite stuff. Blueberries, blue cheese, and butter. There's something missing, <laughs> a fork and a knife, but guess what, I brought it. I'm just gonna coat this over here, right? Give it a nice little smear on there. Oh, look how easy that steak, it just cuts so easy. All my favorite foods are right here. Oh, oh, chef, it works. Next time I cook a steak, it's gonna be just like this. That was incredibly awesome. That was great. Oh, I'm telling you, I can't wait. And you ought to try it at home as well. So that'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time. I'm Jeremy Ashby with Azura Restaurant and Patio. Thanks for watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.